not usually that formal. So I'm going to talk to you about the Sustainable Purchasing Leadership Council. I'm going to talk as fast as I can to try to share as much information as I can, as quickly as I can, and give time for questions. We've got 20 minutes total. I'm going to try to use 10 to 12 of those for my presentation. And so we see sustainable purchasing as an opportunity for leadership. And we focus on that word leadership as really the core identity of the council. When I think about leadership, my favorite quote on the subject is this from a book by Benning and Nanis called Leaders. Managers do things right, and leaders do the right thing. Both roles are very important in a large organization. What we are focusing on is the doing the right thing part, the prioritization, the strategic decisions about how we are thinking as a large organization about purchasing and what leadership looks like from a purchasing perspective, how you not only do things right, that is select the right individual products, but how you step back and look at the big picture and understand how to do the right thing with respect to all of your spend. I'm going to talk about the opportunity we see, the challenges we see, and the solution that we're proposing. The opportunity, looking just at the US for the moment, though ultimately we see this initiative as potentially having global reach. Looking at the US, the US GDP in 2011 was about 15 $2 trillion dollars. It's basically an accounting balance equation. $15 trillion of demand drove $15 trillion worth of value added in the economy. We are interested in that final demand. The demand from government, the demand from households, and the demand from export. And from a sustainable purchasing perspective, from a procurement perspective, we know that government procurement is, ra is relatively rational. That is, there are professional staff called procurement professionals who manage that demand. Household demand is often seen as relatively irrational. It's not managed by procurement professionals. and so more difficult to address from a sustainability perspective. But if you look at how that demand breaks down, about a quarter of it is demand for goods. Three quarters of it is demand for services. And a lot of those services, health care, housing, financial services, food services, transportation, recreation, are delivered by mid to large size companies that themselves have procurement departments or have rational purchasing processes. So we're interested in the combination of those two. That is, business to consumer, service providers, and government that in aggregate represents about $10 trillion of demand in the US economy. And that's what we're calling institutional purchasing. And we're interested in how the organizations that are issuing that demand in the market, into the marketplace can exercise leadership in doing so. That demand, that $10 trillion in demand is estimated to represent, to drive about 70% of US employment and about 60 to 70% of US GHG greenhouse gas emissions, which that means about 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So if we can make a meaningful difference in how that economic signal gets sent into the marketplace, we can make a significant difference for the shape, shape of the economy and the shape of the environment and the impacts of that economy. So that, that opportunity is an opportunity for institutional purchasers to shape the marketplace with their purchasing dollars and an opportunity for the professionals who guide that purchasing to help to shape those markets. We see purchasing organizations as uniquely positioned to demand transparency, to incorporate sustainability criteria, to drive down the cost of sustainable products, and to ensure that end users understand, like, and adopt new products and services. We also recognize the importance of all the other market stakeholders who are part of the supply chain that institutional purchasers deal with and engage in their purchasing activities. The challenge that we see in seizing that opportunity and trying to shape that economic signal to achieve positive social and environmental objectives is a lack of coordination. You have a lot of organizations out in the marketplace issuing signals that they call sustainable purchasing signals, whether it's different federal agencies or differences between the federal government's demand signal in the marketplace and private sector demand signals, higher education demand signals. There are a lot of signals out in the marketplace from different institutional purchasers and for the professionals within those organizations who are trying to do sustainable purchasing. There's not a consistent program of guidance to help them in doing that work. So the root challenge, as we see it, is the lack of standardization in how sustainable purchasing is defined, guided, measured, and rewarded. <coughs> I'm like, no, oh, I'm not getting the solutions yet. Yes, so the solution that we're proposing is could we collaborate to launch a shared program for guiding, measuring, and recognizing leadership in sustainable purchasing. That's the big blue sky idea behind the council. 
And we see the council as a big tent that we are putting up to bring together all of the organizations that are already at work on that question to try to get that coordination to happen. So if the challenge is a lack of coordination, we're trying to build a community of collaboration among the professionals who care about creating a common program for guidance so that we can send coordinated market signals into the marketplace through a shared program of guidance. The analogy that we use for the organization, for our council, and for the work that we're doing is the U.S. Green Building Council and the LEAD program, which has grown very quickly from a big blue sky idea about 20 years ago to a powerful force that has transformed the green building marketplace. As we see it, well, where we stand today is roughly where USGBC was 20 years ago. There was, a, there was very little coordination in the marketplace around what green building meant, but a lot of people were trying to do it. Looking forward, ten, hopefully 10, not 20 years, we're hoping that we could bring the same kind of consistency to the marketplace <coughs> around the definition of sustainable purchasing that USGBC has brought around the definition of green building. So our mission is to support and recognize purchasing leadership that accelerates the transition to a prosperous and sustainable future. Our structure is as a collaborative space for a community of purpose, that is, those individuals and organizations that want to pursue leadership in sustainable purchasing convene to define, pursue, and promote sustainable leadership in institutional procurement. Just a quick timeline. Big picture, by the end of this year, we're hoping to have version one of our guidance for leadership and sustainable purchasing out in the marketplace. And by the end of 2015, version one of a rating system that would be analogous to the lead rating system, but would rate the institution on its level of leadership in sustainable purchasing. To give you a sense of the, both the background, digging a little deeper into that timeline, the, the original big, big idea came out of an earlier initiative called the Green Products Roundtable that had met for four years, convened by the Keystone Center, to look at what green purchasing would mean, green products would mean in the marketplace. And after about four years of work, the idea for the council was born in early 2012. A steering committee was formed, drawn from a diverse range of organizations from government, private sector, and the NGO community. We, we ran a pilot project with the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education to test the idea of defining leadership in a generic way across any institution of higher education. What we learned is if you look at purchasing across higher education and you analyze it from the perspective of environmental impact, five purchasing categories, electricity, ag, food, and dining, construction and maintenance, fuels, and sanitary and waste, represent roughly 64% of total spending and an estimated 83% of environmental impact. Now this was a very crude analysis, but what it told us was that it does make sense for a large organization to prioritize and look at certain categories of spend first as the higher, higher priority categories of spend before digging into the details and trying to do green or sustainable purchasing everywhere across their spending portfolio, but really to look at those important categories first. And that's really the fundamental idea of our idea of leadership is stepping back and when we say do the right thing, what we mean is look at your overall spend and think about where in that spend you have opportunities to exercise meaningful influence. So, the approach is roughly to give, give guidance to large organizations on how to analyze their spend, develop an action plan based on that analysis, implement that action plan, measure their progress, and then, to the extent they're interested, earn recognition in the marketplace, try to exercise leadership, and be able to get recognition in the form of a label of some sort at the institutional level. So we just step back. So th this was the original conception. We launched with an idea here at, here at American University in DC in July with a panel that was hosted by Joel McCower from GreenBiz, and we had a good cast. We had about almost 1,000 viewers of the webcast. We formed a founder circle of organizations that committed financial and technical resources to the launch of the council. You'll see that we, we, did, we did our best to assemble a group of organizations that were diverse in terms of their, their market penetration, their market diversity, and their sectoral representation in terms of government, private sector, and NGO, and the government, at the government level, the different scales of government, from federal, down to state, and at the city level. We also engaged a range of strategic partners who we see as well aligned to help us achieve the objectives that we've, that we've 
put forward. We've signed MOUs with all of these organizations to help support their work and for them to help support our work. We held a founding summit at the National Academies of Science in August, where we set out a work plan that basically defined what we would try to build as an organization over the next few years. And this is a diagram of that. If, the, if those three boxes represent what an organization might want to do, those, the two gray boxes and the white box, that is internally, and list support, scope the activities for what they might want to do around sustainable purchasing, develop a structure for internal and external stakeholder engagement, and then start running that process that I referenced earlier of analyzing their spend and action planning, implementing the plan, and then measuring results as an iterative process, and then get recognition in the marketplace. Then our job is what's in the blue box, that is to provide guidance, training, and community of practice to support, support the first two, and then to convene the appropriate stakeholders to decide on how many points should be awarded for different types of activity and levels of performance in order to earn recognition in a rating system. We launched a website in late 2013. We opened for membership in October of 2013. We, we released we agreed in our founding summit that the first task should be to develop a set of principles for leadership and sustainable purchasing. We released those last month on May 8th. The, the principles were developed with a technical advisory group, and that format of using a technical advisory group to develop content is the format that we will be using for all of the major deliverables that we produce. That is, the guidance and the rating system that we developed through technical advisory groups overseen by a technical committee. Just to give you a sense of how we're defining leadership and sustainable purchasing, just want to give you a sense of what those principles are. We've identified five principles. The first three really speak to that step-by-step -step process. An organization that demonstrates leadership and sustainable purchasing should understand the impacts associated with its purchasing, make a commitment to take responsibility for those impacts, and then demonstrate results on that commitment. The last two are more speak to the spirit of our organization commitment to innovation and a commitment to transparency. And I just want to highlight innovation because it was it's part of the theme of this event and also it's very important to us. We've highlighted innovation as a principle for leadership and sustainable purchasing because we think purchasers should recognize and should take advantage of the opportunity that they have to drive innovation in the marketplace through the questions that they ask of their suppliers. And we see leadership as something that we, we see leadership organizations as those that recognize that opportunity and take the leadership to do so. We heard some examples of that just a moment ago. I won't go into that in detail. I just want to highlight, for those of you who go to our website and download the principles, I would highlight for you that there are a number of notes and definitions that go along with the principles, including footnotes two, three, and four, which are our definition of sustainability. And what I just highlight about that definition is that it's it's very much in the spirit of the federal definition of sustainability that is recognizing that what sustainability is about is about the systems on which all of us depend, the social, environmental, and economic systems on which we all depend and on which future generations will depend. And sustainable purchasing is purchasing that advances a world in which those systems will survive and thrive in the future. We held an annual meeting at the Convention Center here in DC just a couple weeks ago very well attended meeting, 120 very diverse organizations attended that meeting, about 170 representatives from those organizations. And we're now, that, or, that meeting was focused on starting to pull together the technical advisory groups that will help us to develop the guidance that we will release at the end of the year for version one of our guidance for leadership and sustainable purchasing. I'll stop there with this message that all of you have an opportunity to be part of the council and to participate in the conversation that we're convening under this tent and building the guidance that we will be issuing in the marketplace. I'm happy to answer questions. Thanks.